Hi everyone, if you're new here to the channel, my name is Obi, I'm a third year medical student, and welcome to Obi Med. Alright, so this week I'm on ophthalmology like last week. If you didn't see my last week's video, I'll link it up right here. It's my very first day, my very first impressions of ophthalmology. And now, well, it's the continuation of this video. So yeah, um, today I've been in the operating room, as you can see by my scrubs. Uh, these are not my training scrubs. So this morning I assisted to uh, a surgery, which was a trabeculectomy and a cataract surgery at the same time. So if you don't know what a trabeculectomy is, so it's a type of glaucoma surgery where um, it's like the last, last resort, all the other treatments that don't work, and I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is. Basically involves making a flap and doing a hole inside, like through the sclera, through like the, the, the eye, basically, to let the liquid come out, the aqueous humor. So yeah, it was quite insane. So in the surgery, um, okay, you know, I told you that everything's like really small and I'm not sure if I liked it or not because it's everything through a microscope. I'm starting to really enjoy it because it's, I don't know, just the precision. I really appreciate the amount of skill that you need to have and I think it's just amazing. So basically what the surgery involved, the trabeculectomy is you make a little flap in the sclera of the eye. And I think in terms of width, it was like, I don't know, like three millimeters maybe, like a little square, three millimeters by three millimeters and then just a little flap that raises up. You can Google it. Um, and then within that flap, they make like a little rectangle, a little hole, so you can like um, make the hole basically through like the eye. And then they patch that hole back, like they just flip the scar back and then they suture it. And oh my God, the sutures were like 10. This is my suture that I've ever seen, like 10, not 10 all just 10. Um, and yeah, the precision was like just insane. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Um, and then like as this surgery was happening, like, like okay, the surgeon first of all started with the flap um, and then like the surgeon did the uh, cataract surgery and the cataract surgery is not the first time I assisted to one. Uh, they're pretty cool. It involves making like a few little cuts um, in the, on the sclera and then getting inside um, the lens and just removing it because the lens becomes cloudy and then people can't see anymore. So the whole point of the surgery is to replace the lens with an artificial lens. And so, yeah, um, surgery was pretty cool. I think it's um, quite satisfying to see like when the when the lens is being suctioned out. Um, so yeah, that's really cool. And then when they um, replace the new lens, it's like through this sort of like syringe apparatus that goes into uh, one of the slits and then you just push in and then the lens comes out. It's all like folded, like in a, in a roll and then comes out and then whoop, it just opens up and it's just so cool. It's the coolest thing. Um, so yeah, it, it, once again, it's like so small, but it's quite satisfying. Like I'm getting to um, enjoy more and more of like these very, very small, minute skills. Um, I'm not saying that uh, these are not present in like bigger structure surgeries, but I just, it's just really cool. I like the science behind it. It's just really nice. Um, yeah, I think I like a few things actually, but anyways, so that's what the surgery was. Um, and then after completing the surgery, after completing the cataract surgery, uh, like change the lens, then they completed the trabeculectomy and then they closed the flap and then they sutured back um, the sclera and everything. So yeah, that was quite cool. Uh, it wasn't that long, it was like one hour long surgery. Um, so yeah, that was really nice to see. And then this afternoon I'm in the emergency room and I have quite a few things I need to see. In the emergency room, I have this like to-do list from school and I need to see a removal of a corneal foreign body. So um, yeah, I'm eager to see that. Then a subconjunctival injection. Um, what else, what else, what else? Surging of the tear duct. And then yeah, a few other things uh, here and there. Um, like I don't wish that to happen to, happen to people, but I do need to see it like from a learning perspective. So yeah, I hope I'm gonna get to see that in the emergency apartment right now because that's where I'm headed. Um, actually, I'm gonna go get lunch and then I'm gonna go afterwards. But yeah, um, I really enjoy ophthalmology, honestly, more than I thought. Surgery part is really cool. And then the clinic side is also really cool. You can do like all these different eye exams and um, examinations. So yeah, which I'm gonna talk to you more about when I get home, I think. So yeah, see you guys later. All right, so here's a slit lamp. So the slit lamp basically is like a microscope with a bright light. 
that's used during eye exams by ophthalmologists and it gives a closer look to the different structures at the front of the eye and inside the eye as well in the back wall basically and in order to better look at the retina which is like i said the back wall inside the eye uh, we often need to dilate the patient's iris so we put these little drops in like little drugs um, to dilate the iris but that means that the patient can't drive for a few hours afterwards because well then you're gonna have a hard time focusing on things and driving well you know you sort of like need to see where you're going so yeah we need to tell the patients about that um, so basically how it works is that the patients put their heads here um, like they rest their chin on this little piece of plastic and then they don't move and then the ophthalmologist moves the machine around with this little joystick at the bottom, which can move the microscope up and down, side to side, and then uh, forwards and backwards, basically. And then the light is gonna be controlled at the very top. Like you can swing it um, to like different sides to see, like to have different angles where the light is shining through so you can see different structures. And so to examine the cornea and the sclera for any like scratches or damages, we will often use a little like yellow dye, which can show if there's any damage. And then when you turn on the light beam, well, that allows the doctor to see if there's any damages. It allows to see the cornea, the iris, and then the retina at the back of the eye. So that allows, for example, uh, even to look at the lens to see if it's cloudy, like for patients who have cataracts, um, it also allows to see the optic disc and the optic nerve, where doctors would look for things like symmetry, color change, signs of inflammation, um, vascularization, and the contour to see if there's any abnormalities. Now, yes, you can do this with other, like, other tools, such as an otoscope, but honestly, the resolution is really not as good and you cannot see as well. Like, yes, you can see the retina and some other aspects of the eye, but it's really not great, especially if you're trying to analyze like the sclera uh, or the cornea to see if there is any damages. Like you cannot zoom in, you cannot have the resolution to see if there's any scratches. And for the retina, it's the same thing. Like, yes, you can see, but it's really nothing compared to the resolution that you get with a slit lamp. And then of course, there's like so many other exams that can be done, like to look at the eye and examine the eye. But yeah, that's one that I use in a few patients. And it was quite interesting to see like different things. Um, I did see the removal of a foreign body, which was quite interesting. Uh, and I did see a few scratches on the corneas using the yellow dye, and that was quite cool to see. But yeah, I think that's gonna be it for today. My little explanation of how to use a slit lamp. I know it's very rudimentary, but you know, just to give you an idea of how it works. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, you can send me a DM or write them in the comments down below. If you're not subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. If you didn't see my previous videos, I'm gonna link them right here. So please go ahead and check those out and see you in next week's video.